So this is the Slanger S629 Pop, the Deep Cool AK620 in there. So 620 is the magic number. So these should work pretty well together, right? Welcome to Machines and More. So I like happy number coincidences. Here you got a dual tower air cooler, ARGB, and this digital display tells you the CPU temp or the CPU utilization. Nifty, right? So we have a really interesting dual tower air cooler today. As mentioned, this is the AK620 from Deepcool. This, uh, we've got a black version and we've also got the white one that I have in my hands here. Full disclosure, these were provided by Deepcool for the purposes of making this review. Big thanks to them for their support of the channel. However, I'm not compensated for this review. The research and the testing, these are all independent and the manufacturer has no say into this review, neither do they have a preview of this content. Okay, so features two towers here, six dual loop heat pipes, and you've got a full copper cold plate. I assume it's nickel plated. It comes equipped with two 120 millimeter FK120 fans uh, that go up to 1850 RPM. So assume the 620 naming convention, six for the number of heat pipes and 20 for a 120 millimeter fan here. Um, so, you know, that's a, that's a happy match, right? So the marquee feature here is the digital display. It clicks in magnetically, okay? And uh, there are just two cables from this that run to your motherboard. One is an ARGB cable that will connect to a five volt three pin ARGB port. And the other one connects to a USB 2.0 header to get the CPU temp or the utilization data. These cables are fairly well concealed since they sit in a groove. And if you mount the outboard fan over it like this, you really won't see that cable because it sits into here. All right, uh, so that's a nice touch. The other 120 millimeter fan is designed to sit under the display, all right, right under it, uh, which will cover it because you're gonna view your case like this typically. So out of the box, this fan is set up to exhaust out the rear of your case. If you want it, you can flip the fan so that they can intake from the rear since they just use regular fan clips, so that's nice. Uh, but one thing to note, the display cables can become a little bit susceptible to rubbing against the exposed fan blades right here. So do take note of that. The entire assembly, assuming you're able to mount the fans flush or lower than the display on spec, it's uh, 162 millimeters and I measured it just a tad over that. So it is a bit on the taller side for a 120 millimeter fan tower. Uh, the display, it does add a bit of height, right? So for example, the Scythe Fuma 3, when I tested it, measured in at about four millimeters lower. The heatsink itself is only at 157 millimeters. So you are losing a bit of compatibility for having this, you know, the display. So that is the trade off there. Compatibility is pretty good. It will mount to most modern sockets. For consumer sockets, you got Intel 11.5X, 1200, 1700. For AMD, AM4, and AM5 were all supported. The mounting hardware here is pretty simple. You have a back plate plus standoffs for Intel. And for AM4 and AM5, you will use the stock back plate and standoffs with nuts. After installing the heatsink and the fans, the user can install deep cool software, which will allow the user to customize the display. Uh, in addition to the CPU temp, you can also choose your CPU utilization percentage or have it shuffle between those two intermittently. And you can also toggle between Celsius or Fahrenheit for the temperature display. Performance for this cooler is pretty good. I tested it in two cases. So it doesn't fit the NR200 with the panel closed, but I have used that test system as an open testing system for bigger air coolers. And I also tested it in the uh, S620 here uh, where I previously had the Dark Rock Pro 5 running. Performance for the AK620 is good uh, for only having two 120 millimeter fans. It compares well with the Ryzen 7 5800X against other big dual towers, which are running at least one larger fan here. Uh, on a noise normalized basis for AM4, it doesn't quite catch the bigger coolers here, but it's very comparable to the Noctua D15 at the noise intervals that I have tested the D15 at, which uh, at max speed for the D15, the AK620 is within fractions of a degree. So for many of you, that may basically be the same performance since it is within run-to-run -run variance. I'm gonna run the Fuma 3 the same exact way with the open panel, but I fully expect the AK620 to outperform it. So just for a reference point, 
at the Fuma 3's max RPM with a closed uh, vented side panel, the Fuma 3 runs at about 72 degrees uh, under similar conditions. In the Slager S620, where this cooler fits with the panel closed, uh, we're running here with a 12700K and the AK620 actually passes the Dark Rock Pro 5 by a couple of degrees at a noise optimized level. And that is really impressive. Uh, this is only running at 1270 RPM here. So this could be a very, very quiet cooler for this case. Let's take a quick listen to the noise profile here. So I did detect a hint of uh, motor inconsistency at the max RPM, just a little bit of whine. Uh, take a listen here. Pricing for this cooler, $80 US or so, and uh, there has been a non-display version of this cooler, and that'll run $65 to $70 US. So you're actually not paying too much of a premium for having the display. And in fact, even with display, it's a lot cheaper than the other dual towers I compared to. Uh, figure $120 or so for the Noctua Chromax D15. $100 or so for the Be Quiet Dark Rock Pro 5. So considering that you get this digital display with this, this is a highly recommended cooler from a performance value and fun factor perspective. Now, we've usually seen the AIOs with the digital displays, but now yeah, you can get an air cooler with one too. Hope you've enjoyed this review, found it helpful. As always, please give a like, make sure you are subscribed. I will leave links down below for the cooler. Thanks for watching.